Hey guys, Pablo with BND and today we start Top Reddit Post Singles, where we are gonna have one Top Reddit story for your entertainment. And don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and a comment in the end of this video. So you want to falsely accuse me of touching your kid, huh? Let's dance. Background. I work in social work with individuals with intellectual disabilities. Part of that work involves working with children who have mental health issues, CMH. I am currently the only male staff in the area who is qualified to work with kids because it requires a ton of special training. The cast. Me, a 25-year-old newbie to social work. BK. Brat kid. A decent kid with some brat-like tendencies and one awful-ass mother. BM, Brad's mom, horrible mom, or piece of literal, non-figurative crap. Take your pick. DW, Daniel freaking Webster, the greatest lawyer who ever lived, reincarnated into a local defense attorney. With all that said, let's get down to business. Exposition, time to do the adult thing. In 2012, I moved out of my parents' home and back to the town where I went to college, having taken a job at a local social workplace. It's a great place, has its issues, much like in similar business. See my other post. But at the end of the day, their heart's in the right place. One of my duties early on was to work with three kids, BK and two others, in a neighboring town, 15 minutes away or so. Each Wednesday, three male staff would all go over and hang out with kids. It went well, each kid backbounded with a different member of the party, and we made great strides with them. The kid who backbounded with me was, of course, BK. Most of their issues involved behavior stuff, so we had to stop them from picking on each other. Mostly, though, we played Minecraft craft or whole blocks. Yeah, I got paid for that. It was a best, and it went on for about 6 months or so till school got out in May of 2013. When summer went by, BK was out of the party cause he had other stuff to do. Camp stuff, I assume. Anyway, Summer gets out and BK is back with the group. Now, I was prepping to work with him again. I'd heard around the office his mom was quite a pill. Now, we live in a tiny little conservative community, and unfortunately, the populace is a bit racist. The women's Hispanic, and I'd noticed a trend that any Hispanic parents were often disparaged in the office, so I didn't think much of it. Rise in action. Why the hell didn't I see that coming? My first time back with the kid, we decided to go swimming. Now, we'd done this before, usually with two staff, but the kids aren't that much of a handful, so I took the shift on my own. No big deal, right? Anyway, swimming goes well, but when we were getting out of the pool and into the locker room, I get dressed on my own, then came to find out BK just standing there, naked as the day he was born. I encourage him to get dressed and he says no, again, while avoiding any eye contact whatsoever. Hey, that ceiling tile is interesting as hell, you know? I tell him again he needs to get dressed. BK says, if you don't let me do what I want, I'll say that you touched me. Excuse me, what? The hell? I play it off as no big deal, telling him, well, I won't be able to work with you anymore. He apologized, I get back to the office and say, hey, by the way, this kid threatened to say I touched him. Boz and I made a note of it and we both agreed that he had to have heard that somewhere. As the fall goes on, kids having trouble in school, mom behind the scenes apparently trying to convince people that one of the other kids at the group is touching him. I don't put two and two together, but definitely stand up for the other kiddo. He's very into women and thinks boys are icky. BK, on the other hand, is about touchy-feely as laborants in a penis factory. I know this all in the dock, of course. Mom continues asking me to work with him one-on-one. -on -one. Again, no connection made. Sweet, more money. I'll do it. Documenting truly, of course, anytime he does weird stuff, which is increasing often. It's all going pretty well, then comes my TIFU moment. Climatic moment. This is theater lingo, not sex, you damn perverts. So once a month, we do a kids overnight at a neighboring town. We go to a hotel, swim, play video, and so on. Come November, Boz is encouraging me to let some of the kids I work with go along. So I tell parents, only BM is really interested, so BK goes with. All goes well till bedtime anyway. At this point, BK snags a big bed that is usually reserved for two kids. I have to stay in the room with him, so I get a blow-up mattress ready. Then the little kid asked me to use the bed too. 
Uh, excuse me, what the hell? We of course have separate beds, but it really didn't matter in the end. On January 2nd it happened, BM made a formal accusation. She went down the line saying I did everything in the book at every location we'd ever visit on our outings. Dialed him in the library, dialed him in the park, dialed him in the hotel room, with vivid accounts of penetration for good measure. Now, this is a point in the story where BM's job becomes incredibly important. See, she works at the Department of Human Service, aka the place in my state that holds out food stamps, welfare checks, and accusations of child abuse. She's just a food stamp pusher, but she likes to use discrimination as a battle cry anything doesn't go her way. And so, despite the evidence, she forced the issue. The HS makes a formal 30-day analysis, and when it's all done, guess what? I'm cleared. End of the story, right? Nah, bro. Mom appeals, without my knowledge, and adds an hour-long doll therapy session into the evidence, without my knowledge. The case goes from unfounded to confirmed, founded and placed, without my knowledge. March 28, 2014. Suddenly, I no longer have a job and can't work in my chosen field for 10 years. Excuse me, what the hell? Fall in action, enter Daniel freaking Webster. So up until now, it's probably not being super clear why mom's pulling that stuff. Thing is, she's out of a home because she's out of money, and she wants to sue my place of employment to get a new home. Currently, they're living at the nation house that's set to be demolished. I find out this and other facts during my investigation period. At this point, revenge isn't on the mind. I just want to get out of the hellhole I've been thrown into. First thing I do is start asking around town. Lady has a rap after all. I talk to the cop who refused to arrest me due to no actual evidence and he says she's been pulling stuff with him for years. For example, he's trying to get the library director arrested for refusing to cancel her overdue fine. Discrimination, of course. We talk for some time and he ends it with, well, maybe I'll start telling her no a bit more. I then head to the library and sure enough, the director is all too happy to chat with me. Off the record, of course, due to confidentiality. The conversation ends with, well, maybe I'll call her about getting that fine paid. This continues for a few stops as I slowly release her stronghold on prominent community members, effectively ostracizing her. At one point, someone suggests I head to the local lawyer who is well known for not taking any crap. I head over to his office and we chat a bit. He agrees to take the case for half price. At first, he thinks I'm a raving lunatic with a serious paranoia issues. As time goes on, he collects evidence that paints a very clear picture of what she's doing. He says to me, you know, I think she's making the whole thing up to get a lawsuit. State's Attorney General, yes, really. At first, can't understand why he's giving out sub as faster than Charlie Sheen gives out STDs. But after seeing the evidence, she gets on board too. The only problem is, the local DHS does not. See, they want a definitive answer, not a settlement. Why? Because they want to fire BM. By this point, DW can't stand those douchebags, but we have to let it play out. My favorite moment from this period it's a phone conference where BM calls in, trying to stop my appeal and gets told to shut the hell up by Attorney General and DW. She leaves the call sobbing and she's kicked off by her own counsel. At last, we determine in settlement that I take a polygraph. If I pass, the state drops everything. If I fail, I drop my appeal. It, if it is inconclusive, it goes to trial. Now, DW straight up says, I never tell people to take polygraphs. People say one thing and the polygraph shows another. It's almost never good for a case, but you need to take that polygraph. He did this under the full understanding that we could walk at any time if it appeared to go in a direction we didn't like. And I said yes because, quite frankly, I was out of money. So I take the polygraph and pass, in the minimum amount of time allotted for tests. Merry freaking Christmas. To know a man, sweet, sweet revenge. Now, as you may have been noting, I've been taking little actions here and there to prevent this woman from exercising influence. Ooh boy, did they add up. After my polygraph test, the woman was immediately fired. The other DHS employees had throughout been telling my bosses she's a freaking moron, and suddenly they're not allowed to say anything about her. They dropped her like the dirty rotten beard that she is. I immediately file a cease and desist order to prevent her from saying one damn word about me. 
My boss calls me in. Yes, I got my job back. Looking very angry. She says, do you have any idea what you have done? Then grinning, tells me BM pulled her kid from our program. A few weeks later, I'm walking through Walmart and guess who I see? Their newest employee, BM. I take the high road and avoid her while simultaneously taking the low road and asking others who know her what's going on. Turns out she lasts a month or two at Walmart before trying the same stuff and getting kicked out on her ass. Last I heard, she moved out of the state and was later seen trying to file her taxes illegally in our state. Her own lawyer screamed her out of his office. In the end, I don't know how much my own actions actually brought about her downfall. She more or less did it to herself. I just saw her on a cliff and pushed. Silly BM, you thought I'd be an easy mark. TLDR, woman tries to accuse me of touching her kid, inadvertently sets up every aspect of her downfall. I help, obligatory number two. Let me make it very clear that I don't want any politicization. My current stance that I believe survivors until they're proven wrong. DHS did their job in taking this seriously and my lawyer did his job in disproving it. I had previously said the system works, but I now realize this wasn't accurate to convey my opinion. The system is horribly broken, but it is most often broken in favor of people like me. I don't want my story being used as an excuse to deny victims a voice. I also don't want any racist BS. People often use their skin color, ethnicity, religion, etc. to get free things. This is just an extreme example. The women's unbalanced as hell, but she is not a representative of a whole. Last but not least, this was an administrative appeal. Where former honors on me, the necessary to prove the appeal is warranted. If you're offered a poly with conditions in a criminal proceeding, it can only hurt you. Thanks for reading and keeping it respectful in the comments. Edit. I figure I'd best explain what a polygraph is for those unfamiliar. In simpler terms, it's a lie detector test. How it works is actually very different from what you see in the movies. What happens a highly trained state agent comes in who specializes in lie detection. He talks to you for about two hours to get a good gauge on who you are, then he tells you what the questions are going to be. There are 10 questions, and two to three of them are asking you about the allegation. The other seven are about random things, with one question you're supposed to lie about. After you go over the questions, you get hooked up to the machine. There are several rubber probes put on various parts of your body, and you do a test run. 10 questions. He tells you if you need to calm down, I did, then he runs 3 to 5 frames of the same questions. If the results are still inconclusive after 5 frames, it's judged as inconclusive. If you fail the test, there's a higher than average possibility you're lying as you have the same responses to the three allegation-related questions as you do to the control question. If you pass the test, there's a somewhat higher-than-average possibility you're telling the truth. The control questions helps gauge if you're cheating the test or just really good at lying. These precautions are all because polygraph tests in its own can tell you very little. Without it, the test would be entirely worthless. And no, it is not admissible in court as hard evidence, generally speaking. Though often, as part of a settlement deal, people agree to take the polygraph to avoid the administrative court as I did. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and I wish you all a happy Mother's Day. I'll see you tomorrow.